Welcome to the Build It Office. We are gonna do a finished office tour today. Finished, it's almost done. So Matt, if you wouldn't mind walking past our very spooky, spooky Halloween decorations here. Buildwood HQ. We did a first office tour when it was under construction. I have no idea how rough it was. It was probably pretty, pretty rough. It was pretty rough. We have been working feverishly over the past few months to get this place finished. It's about 95% of the way there, still a little ways to go, but we're getting close. We're getting close. So I'm going to give you the full tour today. We worked remotely for three years, three and a half years. I think office space is very underutilized in the corporate world, especially in the construction world. People would argue that this is a waste of money and resources for small business like ours. I would argue the complete opposite. I think this is one of the best things we can do for our business right now. Our whole business is predicated on human beings, human capital, and the ability to build teams within our company. You build teams by forming relationships with individuals. You form relationships with individuals by being together. It's human nature. You need to be together. You can't do it over the computer. So I'm more bullish on office space today than ever before, especially as companies are getting rid of their office spaces. I think they're making a huge mistake. I think this is the future. Humans want to be with other humans. That will never go away, regardless of technology and evolution. We still have this very archaic brain we work with, and we like to be other, with other people. We like to belong to a tribe. So I'm, I'm very, very confident this was a very wise investment for our business. We built it to be a space that people want to come to. And, and it's a second home, really. I wanted it to be a second home. I wanted people to, to enjoy coming here, look forward to being here, wanting to spend as much time as, as they can here. We're a remote business. We're spread out across the United States. People come and go as they please. As we ramp up hiring, hopefully we ramp up more locally here in Nashville. The space is gonna fill out pretty quick. Right now it's still a little quiet. We've been in here about a month, um, but we're on a very quick growth plan right now, so it'll be full before we know it. We wanted to create different spaces, and this is all an open layout. People criticized us during the process for making it an open layout. I think it's a no-brainer for our business, maybe not for every business, but one of our values, transparency wins. If you start building closed off office spaces, you start to ruin the just overall layout and, and it's not a very good use of space. And you are not all that transparent, which is not what we stand for as a business. That's important. So we have community tables. We have this living area up front. We have small meeting rooms. So if you do need that private space, you're more than welcome to take it. Big conference room. Everybody has a workstation, so you can just use the space however the hell you want to use the space. We have space for people visiting. You know, the community tables are not just for our people, but anybody here at any time. The office is open Monday through Friday for people to visit. If you're in Nashville, stop by. We'd love to see you. We're going to be showing you the store here in a sec. It's not done yet, but it will be done, so you'll be able to come in, buy, build with stuff or whatever uh, we have there, partner apparel, so all sorts of fun stuff. So come visit us. Our partners, companies we work with, they visit us every once in a while. We wanted this to be a space, not just for our business, but for the industry. Thompson Machinery, they've treated us extraordinarily well. They cut this build with sign on their water jet table, which turned out remarkably well. We have a bookshelf with a lot of the books that have informed our business. People ask, how do you figure all this out? Dan and I read a lot. Um, everybody at the company, I think, reads a lot. Dan and I are always going back and forth about ideas presented to us from books. And we have a few books that have really resonated with us and, and informed how we've built the culture of our company so far. Meeting rooms, they're all named. This is the, this might work room. This is a common phrase here at BuildWit. 
since we don't know what we're doing, we're making this up as we go. We often say this might work when it actually kind of starts to work. We had a, a group, New Hat, they hand drew some of uh, some old antique equipment photos combined with our photos, hand drew it and turned it into wallpaper. One of my favorite features of the whole office. Also, there's a build that skid steer on there as well. It's not cow themed because the cow theme came after they did that, but we'll let it slide. Second room, the skid steer room, of course, how appropriate. We have, um, what are those? Newspaper. Yeah, newspaper clippings from the business that used to be here originally. It was a wooden handle company. They made wooden handles starting in, I think, 1915 for the First World War and the Second World War. Um, handles for shovels and pickaxes because war, you need to dig a lot of holes. So they used the Tennessee ash, which is a really nice wood, make the handles, ship them overseas. The whole building's original. We tried to keep the building as, as original as we could. We restored the floors, we kept the brick original, we kept the ceilings completely exposed. So the space itself is also really important for us. I didn't, our business is unrefined, quirky, and I wanted a space that represents our business. This is essentially a physical representation of our company, BuildWit, and our culture. So I wanted people to be able to walk in here and somewhat get what the hell it is we're trying to do here just by being in this space. It's something that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it makes a lot of sense when you're able to walk in here and hopefully it makes some sense to you watching this video. Uh, community table, we got four slabs of Tennessee ash. This is a from a historic tree that fell over in East Nashville, where I live in the tornado early 2020, just before the whole COVID thing started. Uh, so we picked up these slabs, we kept them as beautiful as we could. Thompson Machinery again helped us out with the bases. So we have some uh, drivetrain components for the two community tables and CAT 330 tracks for the conference table. Conference table is two slabs, 15 feet. Two community tables are both 13 feet each. In the conference room, of course, we have our mission. That's where this whole thing starts. Um, I can't tell you how many times a day I point at that damn thing. We just had an internal podcast drop this past week about how critical it is to our business. That's where it all starts. That's where it all starts. So I wanted that to be, that to occupy the, the prime wall real estate within our conference room to be a reminder about, you know, why it is, why it is we're, we're doing this. Why the hell are we doing this? We're making the dirt world a better place. Continuing on. My desk. I like a less refined work area. I need a bunch of stuff all over to be comfortable working. So it's coming together. People have sent me a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to send us stuff, 1400 Adams Street, number 202, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. We'll take whatever you got. Uh, my hard hats from my jobs in the industry, Kiwit, Skanska, the others, the hard hat I wore at graduation. You get a hard hat at graduation when you graduate construction engineering at Arizona State. We have stickers. So again, if you want to send us stickers, have your company advertise in the build it office, let's, let's see them. Send them our way. Uh, these are all companies that follow us online. We visited, so on and so forth. I wanted to, again, make this not just about BuildWit, but about the industry as a whole. So I wanted at least one little area within our office dedicated to any company that wants a piece of it. Um, my mom sent me that. That's my, one of my original tractors in the sandbox that I played with as a small kid. So I obviously put it in the office. Um, the workstations, we, we made the design up with Southern Maple Co. I, I'm very excited with how they turned out. We wanted them completely solid across there's nothing underneath it's completely open underneath we wanted them as big as we could get them so everybody has five feet of space we wanted them as deep as we could get them and we wanted them somewhat divided but still keep the space open we didn't want to create a bunch of cubicles at the same time so we created these little wood partitions in the middle and then down 
down the center, we had a material fabricated for us where you can put text into it, so you can put pictures or whatever it is. We have office rules, and one of the office rules, my favorite rule is everybody needs a personal item. I'm a huge fan of personal spaces. This is a second home. Um, I hate when you walk into a bank and it's sterile. It just doesn't feel right to me. Uh, so everybody's required to have one personal item. So, you know, family photo, whatever it may be, they can tack it up there at their desk, make it their own space. I think we have, hmm, I think we have 30 workstations total in here. We could probably accommodate 40 people pretty comfortably in the office. It's about 7,000 square feet. Uh, continuing on, the kitchen, probably the most important part of the whole space. Kitchens, as I've explained before, they're very underutilized in an office. The purpose of this office is to create bonds, relationships within our business, strengthen our culture so that we can perform better as a company and team. You do that by spending time together. I wanted a central place for people to be able to spend time together in the office. So we kept it open, it's enormous, it's a fully functional kitchen. We have an ice maker, we have a dishwasher, we have filtered water, we have an oven, uh, a full range. This is one of the most important parts about the office too. I did a lot of research about what people want in an office space. And it's a lot of simple stuff. It's lighting, it's air quality, it's water quality, it's ice, it's having things that make it livable. This is a fully livable space. So I'm really proud with how the kitchen turned out. We have a commercial refrigerator and freezer. It's, a, it's an awesome space. Um, fridge is full of beer. Community table here. Another one of the office rules is everybody needs to eat in the kitchen. Um, two reasons why, so people don't make a mess everywhere, but more importantly, so they're, they're brought together here. This is the central meeting place for our business in general. Continuing on, Again, I wanted to make the space as flexible as possible. So we have a TV, this is, it has a Mac mini on it. So it's essentially a, a Mac computer. You can put whatever you want on there, whether you want to loop heavy equipment videos, want to show pictures, want to show company metrics. There's whiteboard space, all the glass is whiteboard space. The pegboards are still coming along. And then we have this pinup board space. So people sending us notes, we have a spot for all the notes that we've been receiving. Again, our, our business starts with making the dirt world a better place. And I want to remind the people that work here at BuildWit and support us at BuildWit, do business with us, that we really are making the dirt world a better place. It's not nonsense. It's not bullshit. Um, I mean, I just sent one of these letters to the whole team. You know, hey, send this to anybody that doesn't buy into our mission. It's a real thing. We're actually making the dirt world a better place in a very small way now. but. Uh, our reach is, is only, only growing from here. Um, we have bathrooms and showers. This was something that wasn't fun to pull off. Uh, it was very expensive, very time consuming, very problematic. I don't know if I would do it again, but it's really important to me to have this space as livable as possible. So if someone wants to bike to work, run at lunch, there's a walking path 30 seconds away. They can, they can shower here. It's a very comfortable bathroom space. The women's bathroom can double as a nursing room as needed. Uh, we are not quite half women, but we have quite a few women at the company, almost half women. I know that's very important. Uh, going forward, so we wanted a, at least a private space within the office for women, men's bathroom as well. Um, map that we'll be putting tax in to show where we've shot. We're very proud about the fact that we see a lot of the dirt world. That's one of our big competitive advantages is how much of the dirt world we see and interact with. Uh, so we just wanted a physical representation of the geographic extent of our business. Um, these are the, the small phone rooms. This one's, thanks mom and dad. They teed me up pretty good to make all this happen here. These are all portraits we've taken of our, of our partners around the United States. We wanted, again, reminders throughout the office space of why we're doing this. Why, why, why do we do what we do? We do it for these people right here. And it's a very humbling fact. We're not the dirt world, we serve the dirt world. We can't make the dirt world a better place without the dirt world. We don't own a shovel, 
we serve these these folks, and they're they're the reason why the dirt world's as great as it is. Um, antique barn doors that turned out pretty good from a local salvage shop here in town. This is the Rosso room. We have three of these smaller meeting rooms. Dylan Stevens saved my ass early in the business, so I dedicated a room to him. Everybody Matters room. This is just a general business principle. We read a book called Everybody Matters. Couldn't recommend it more. Uh, it's informed a lot of how we operate our business today, how we treat our people. Values wall. Our values is, this is really, so we our, our why is make the dirt world a better place. Our how is, is our operating system, our values. We have nine values. I'm a huge believer in values that are tailored to the business, that really represent the business. They're a non-negotiable at BuildWit. We're building our hiring system right now to recruit based on our values. We have to let someone go in violation of our values. That's without a doubt in the cards. We recognize people based on our values. We have a monthly values award. I talk about values probably every single meeting and every single day. They're just a common operating system within our business. And this is why I can have so much trust within the people at our company is because I know they're living according to these values. And if they're living according to these values, we don't have any problems. I tell everybody, as long as you're living according to the values and operating within our mission, make the dirt world a better place, we won't have any problems here. We wanted to use all of the open wall space the best we could. We didn't have a ton of it because it is an open floor plan. So the walls we did have, we, we wanted to have individual purposes for. This is probably the most visible wall in the entire space because all of the workstations look down to it. I wanted a big ass American flag because as I t explained to everybody, that's why we're able to do this. That's why I was able to create a company from nothing as a kid. That's why we're able to make the dirt world a better place. That's why the dirt world even exists. It's all, it all starts with that. If we don't have that, we don't have any of this. Uh, and I wanted that to be a very prominent reminder in the, in the office space that we have going on. We have iFilm Dirt Studios. It's not built out yet, but this is a editing room for our business. We have a on-site server and it's all backed up also to cloud. It's all accessible from here so they can access footage very quickly for the sake of editing. A bunch of tractor parts I've found from around the United States, Thompson Machinery and Quinn Use Parts out in Bakersfield or Fresno, somewhere on California. They really, really hooked us up. Uh, Quinn Use Parts, they sent the parts across the United States for us. So I just wanted a few random tractor parts that I found, N no particular reason. This will be a full bar once it's stocked. Second home, I wanted to keep people here. I don't. I hate when people have to go to lunch or go get a drink or something like that. I want people to stay here as long as possible, spend as much time here as they can. So having a bar in the office is, it's not really a perk, it's like a strategic, uh, it's another tool to just build relationships within our business, with the companies we work with, with the people in the industry, with one another. So it sounds like this fun little, th oh yeah, we have a full bar, this and that but there's a lot of thought behind it. There's a reason why we have it here, and that's because it helps us build relationships, build rapport with one another, as long as we do it responsibly, obviously. Podcast studio, it is, we're getting carpet in here, so it's not set up right now, but you can get the gist. We have a recording sign. We got a custom dirt talk sign made up for us, which I think is super neat. The the table itself is this wonky piece of ash that we picked up from the same folks that, that got us the ash for the conference table. And then we have some 773 haul truck bodywork that I found at Thompson Machinery that we made into the, the side of the base. We have integrated power throughout. Uh, when it's set up for podcasts, it actually looks pretty damn slick. And this is where all of the podcasts will be from here on out. The reason why it's torn down right now is we're getting carpet in here um, for the sake of, of noise. We're, we're making a few minor modifications to the space as we use it, and carpet controlling noise in the podcast studio was definitely one of the much needed modifications. Continuing on here, I reviewed my entire portfolio and chose about 30 or 40 of my favorite 
photographs to display within the office. These are some of them, the others are scattered throughout the space. Um, some of them were taken before I formally even started the company, like that, like this bulldozer shot here. Some of them were taken um, maybe two months ago, pretty recently. Some of them were, again, some of the first portraits I took at the company, that's John Lee, that was one of my first paid, if not the first paid photo shoot I ever did a few years ago in South Carolina. Um, so we just wanted to elegantly show off our work. Uh, we did it all black and white, that was Molly's idea. I really like the whole black and white vibe to it. It makes it simpler and a little bit more timeless. Right back here, this is the future BuildWit store. So anybody will be able to come in here, we'll have an iPad. They'll be able to buy sweatshirts, hats, stickers, anything of the sort. We're hoping to start selling some of our partners stuff as well too. So it's like, if you want a Rosso hat, for example, you'll be able to get a Rosso hat here and rep our, our partners and, and what they do as well. Uh, we wanted anybody from the industry to be able to visit here and walk away with something. So that's why we wanted a little bit of a, a storefront. Like I said, not totally done yet. It'll be done in the next few weeks and fully stocked. The store is taking a little bit to figure out, but we're starting to, starting to get somewhere. So that's the store. And with that, I believe that's the tour. I guess the, the last point is we wanted this space to be really extraordinary for our business, but we also wanted it to, we wanted to use it as an example of what contractors should be doing with their spaces for the sake of recruiting and retaining people. That's a huge problem in the industry, is people. Office space is a very big component of recruiting people and retaining people. I think contractors, they just view their office space as just pure overhead. And I think that's an outdated mentality. So I want our partners, different contractors within the United States to walk in here and one of our values be the example. I wanted this to be the example of what they could potentially do with their space. Even small stuff like hey, maybe we can create a values wall within our space. It doesn't require this huge uh, remodel. It doesn't require a whole new building or anything like that. Maybe it's just simple stuff like, how do we show off our work in the office space to remind the people that come into the office what the people out in the field do? How do we make our values front and center? How do we define our why and illustrate that why throughout the office space? So I guess if, if I was to leave on a final point, that would be it. It's I think the industry can do a lot from an office space perspective, and I wanted this space to be an example for the industry as well. So thanks for coming to the office tour. If you want to stop by, stop by Monday through Friday. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, 1400 Adams Street, uh, and we would uh, we'd love to have you. Special thanks to Centric, they were the architect firm. Buck Blair with Cushman, he was our broker that helped us make this a reality. The folks that own the space, Vantage, Chris and Gene, they've believed in us, gave us the opportunity to develop the space to begin with. Uh, Tenant Building Group was our, our contractor. They jumped through all the hoops of building a really unique space like this. Um, like I said, Santana did the countertops. We had Fortify do the signage, the neon signage and the signage out front. Southern Maple Co. did the tables, as I explained. New Hat did the graphics for the meeting rooms. So Molly Abbott did the design. There were a lot of people involved in this. I'm probably leaving some folks out, but special thanks to everybody that made this a reality, uh, including everybody at BuildWit. They're the ones that really made this a reality. I played a very, very small role in actually putting it together, but their work made this possible and our partners made this possible. Um, so I think that's, I think that's everybody. We'll leave it there.